DC and the big emphasis for an event like this is mobile home mm. safety and it's very important. First and foremost, I don't want anybody in a mobile home once the watch has been issued. You need to get to a sturdy site built structure. The reason being it only takes an EF1 tornado to destroy a single wide mobile home and an EF2 tornado to destroy a double wide um, mobile home. And we have seen lots of those in East mm. Texas yeah. and tomorrow, unfortunately, I don't think is going to be any different. Right. Mm, so let's go ahead and look at our severe weather checklist for tomorrow evening and you can see find a sturdy shelter. That's one we just went over that have an emergency kit as well. Non perishable food items, water bottles, flashlight, first aid kit, and also have two ways to receive those weather alerts to get those watches and warnings. It can be a NOAA weather radio or the East Texas storm team app. And folks, that's easy. You can download it right after the weather cast and it's free. That's the great thing about it. Now, once you're in a site built structure, it is the most interior room of the home as many walls between you and the outside world as possible. No windows, first floor. It can be a closet, a pantry, an entryway, just something like this at the center of this home. Now it would be a basement. But we just don't have a lot of those here in East Texas. Not a lot going on on live Viper radar. The severe weather outbreak this evening has been more so along the Mississippi River as opposed to the Arklatex. So we dodged a bullet today and hopefully we can dodge another one tomorrow. 60s and 70s a very warm, muggy spring like day for us, and that's part of the reason why we do have a level four moderate risk of severe weather that does include our central and northern counties. The main threat tomorrow will be the threat of damaging wind gusts in excess of 60 miles per hour. Wind could be as strong as 80 miles per hour, so that is something we'll have to keep a watchful eye on. And as I mentioned before, we could see some strong tornadoes as well. EF2 or higher, as especially in this region right here in the red. So stay tuned for more details on that via Futurecast, which we have right here for you. Tomorrow morning, 8, 9 o'clock, it's just a little bit of drizzle. I don't expect any storms to fire until tomorrow afternoon. That's when we will be at our warmest. This is noontime. Showers and thunderstorms starting to fire to our west. By 1 o'clock, we could see some storms in the DFW area, becoming more numerous by 2. By 4, we start to watch out for these individual supercell thunderstorms. You can see them on the screen right there. As we get closer to 5, that's when we could see some storms in our far western counties. Six, Mineola, Athens, perhaps Mount Pleasant seeing the storms, and then getting closer to Tyler and Gilmer by 7 o'clock. By 8 o'clock, Jacksonville to Palestine to Crockett seeing the storms, and we'll start to see a line form out of this. And by 9 o'clock, the storms are shifting off to the east. By 10, they're moving into Louisiana, and I think by midnight, we will be clear of the severe weather threat with that drier air moving in just in time for Friday. It's 3 to 8 o'clock for our far western counties. That's the primary timeline for severe weather there. For places like Gilmer, Tyler, Longview, Jacksonville, Henderson, the timeline will be from 6 to 10 and then it's 8 to midnight for areas shaded in the red and all modes of severe weather are on the table for tomorrow. That does include damaging wind gusts, tornado and large hail. Flash flooding is a possibility as well, but that's more likely for further off to the north and it remains a secondary threat. All that being said, make sure you have a way to get those weather warnings and watches for tomorrow because it is a severe weather alert day. We have not seen one of these moderate risks since November 4th of 2022, which was last year, 58 Friday and dry. And then we're smooth sailing through the weekend with highs in the 60s and 70s. Deep East Texas tomorrow, this is not good news. We do make a run at the lower 80s, about a 60% chance of showers and thunderstorms, but we do dry out and calm down Friday with plenty of sunshine for the weekend and highs in the 70s. Neil, Casey.